What's up guys, we're back again, it's the Fury MMA podcast, episode number... Seven. Well done, Dan. Uh, how are we doing guys, Dan the Gentleman, my video here, and my man Martin the Monster Island. Thank you very much, very ah, kind of you. Good. Um, yeah, seems like a long time we haven't been here, we've <laughs> yeah. had a lot going on, I don't know if you guys have seen our... The Fury Goes Raw footage is, um, you know, we've done a couple of, we've done one at the IBJJF at Crystal Palace, we've yep. done one behind the scenes of Alex Lahore, um, unfortunately I couldn't make the one with Coffee Black, uh, but you know, we'll be coming, so keep an eye on them on Facebook and on our Instagram and Twitter pages, but mine, let's go on uh, today. Yeah, uh, very interesting uh, show that we've got lined up for you. We're going to talk about some, you know, international fight news as some as well as some of uh, domestic scene fight news as well. So, um, first of all, let's crack on with the sponsors. You done it last time. My time this time. Um, first sponsor that we're going to give a shout out to is Green Ink Printing. Now, Green Ink, you our know, brand new sponsors. Our brand new sponsors. I might like to add. You know, these guys they can print anything for you on literally anything so you know what take a look out for green ink top-notch company um also take a look out if i'm not gonna i don't know if i should give it away or not but we got exclusive 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 programs and magazines coming out of the next show so keep an eye out from them and obviously they'll be done by the green ink printing company also our second sponsor is Sponsored by Seasons Beatings. Yes, that's correct. Fury MMA show on Sunday, December the 7th at Studio 338. The big bad boys of Fury MMA return again to Studio 338 for Seasons Beatings. And we'll be talking about the fight card later on in the show. That's definitely. Um, just to quickly recap on the weekend. Wow, man. I don't know if you managed to watch it, um, Martin, but UFC, Mendez versus Heard Aldo. about it. Ah, oh, man, the second time they met. Fight. It was, it was, I thought it was a close decision, but Aldo, I mean, the guy at one point, I think it was round number three, um, which uh, Mendes dominated, looked like he was dominating the only round he dominated, mm. but it was so hard to call. It was back and forth, they were throwing bombs, and that's what you like to see, you know. Of the course. UFC obviously bring the greatest fights, and that was in Brazil. Um, and again, somehow... Conor McGregor managed to steal the show. <laughs> he turns up there. I don't know if you watched the UFC in bed. He turns up there. He does does what he does. Gets the cameras on him. So, you know, respect to him. And it's good to see, you know, European fire over there. And I'm hoping, I hope, we'll get to see either Conor McGregor versus Mendes or Conor McGregor oh, man, versus Aldo. Yeah. <coughs> Another guy who was fighting was our very own England. Linton the Swarm Vassell. He fought Emmanuel Newton for the Bellator Light Heavyweight Championship. I stayed up late night, you know, if, if Linton had won this, this would be like the first internationally recognised champion. Yeah. You know, on the I mean, MMA I, scene. I, I, didn't, I didn't stay up and watch it. Um, I've done Tough Mudder on Sunday, so yeah. I could have been bed early. Um, but, you know, I've seen him fight before. He's, you know, he used to be the former UF, um, UCMMA yeah. light like heavyweight champ. You know, it was it was close. I mean, I really felt for him. I mean, it was a um, five round war. You know, he lost it in the fifth round. I mean, I slightly had a, pro- a little bit of a problem with you know some of his sort of like cornerman's tactics. Like for me, the first two rounds, yeah, you know, he dominated. He was in the lead. The second round, Emmanuel, you know, came back into it, but it was at the you know the ending of the third round at the beginning of the fourth round. His corner, and you know, you know, as an ex fighter yourself, you know, I'm, I want to know what you think of this. I mean. His corner team says to him, relax and rest in this round, which was the fourth round, and then t- let's take it into the fifth round and win it. And my, my opinion is, if he had won that fourth round, he would have been three rounds up. The only way he could yeah, have lost was... Uh, it's, it's, it's Dan, you know, I'm not his corner man, and I, don't, you know, yeah. I can't advise him on it. But personally, you just got to go out and, and do the job. There's no time for relaxing in a yeah. fight. And I, I, I hate... You know, not, not, not this far, but you've seen it before when, you know, the guy's a couple of rounds up and they, and all they do is just play it safe. You know, go there to finish the fights. Don't ever leave it in the hands of the judges. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it wasn't left in the hands no. of the judges, no. you know, like, a, you know, he was he was subbed in the fifth round. Um, hey, unfortunate you know, things happened, but, you know, Linton, oh man, it was, you know... He'll be back. He'll be I know back. he'll be back. Oh, man, I know he'll brilliant be back. performance. Very, Very good nice performance. Guy. All right, we're moving on, on to the season's beating scene. All right. On the line today, we have got a guy called PK Zadeh. Now, if you don't know about this guy, he he is a good fighter. And, you know, there's been a bit of smack talk between him and Yusuf Beza. 
on the, on the Facebook forums, on the Twitter. Bad boy, but, you know, without any further ado, let's bring him online now. PK, are you online? Hey, what's up? How are we doing, buddy? You're here with me, myself, and Martin Island. Just wanted hey, to introduce man, you to man. the show. What's up, then, PK? How are you, buddy? I can't complain, man. How are you, man? Good, good. Now, here you're about to just start training, so we won't keep you for long. Um, oh, awesome. Thanks. PK, no one, you know, all right, first of all, where does, where, does, where does the name PK come from? What is it short for? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's that's a that's a, that, that's a good that's a good good short name, and obviously yeah. you're originally originally from Iran, um, yeah. so you know it's good to have international fighters on the fight card. Who? Yeah, I've got a British passport, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> I can English first and foremost. But you know, I got my heritage from Iran. Nice. Yeah. All right, PK. Look, I, me personally, I don't you know know too much about you. I, you know, I've only just heard about you. So could you, you know, tell us you know a little bit about yourself? I mean. Um, how did you get into MMA? You know, who do you train with? Um, I split my training between three different gyms. I do my boxing at the boxing gym, which is where I'm at right now. Mm. I do my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at uh, Mill Hill uh, Roger Gracie, and I do my wrestling with my wrestling coach Eric Siaki at uh, London Hunters. Wow! And so I, I, get, I get around. I get around as uh, the old two spot song says. <laughs> <laughs> Gets around like two pack by the tons of things. <laughs> Just, 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 just a, yeah. just a quick question. Being, being, obviously having the Iranian blood in you, does that mean, yeah. does that mean the uh, the wrestling blood's in you as well? Um, I mean, listen, I try and approach everything equally and with an open mind. I really do like wrestling. It doesn't make up the bulk of my skill set, but uh, I really do try and seek out good wrestling coaching because I know it is a weakness in uh, in uh, UK MMA because it's hard to access. So I really do try and prioritize. Uh, wrestling training, but I am a mixed martial artist first and foremost, or at least I hope I am anyway. Nah, yeah, well, I've, I've, I've had the privilege of refereeing, again, uh, refereeing for you a couple of times, and yeah. you know, he's, he's, I mean, from what I've seen from, you, from your fights, you've, you're, you are very well rounded, but oh, thank you. you know, you're, you are fighting Yusuf Beza. I mean, how much do you know about your opponent, and what have you seen of him? commentating at Fury 10 when Yusuf Beza basically, you know, he annihilated his opponent and just yeah. left the cage. I mean, what was your thought on that? I mean, listen, that post fight adrenaline does crazy things to crazy people. I mean, look, Phil Davis called that Anderson Silva recently. I mean, how crazy <laughs> <was> <laughs> Yeah, that was on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm not going to begrudge him over it. You know, listen, uh, people make mistakes. I thought it was disrespectful. But at the end of the day, you know, like, I'm sure, like, from what I heard before, he went up to the guy afterwards and apologized. You know, there's no point crying over spill milk. What's done is done, you know. And, you know, I've heard that, you know, you, you was actually somebody that, um, let's just say you've, you, you've put yourself forward to face Yusuf. So, I mean, what is it in, um, I mean, what, what is it about Yusuf that, you know, you feel, felt like, you know, I, I would like to face him? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not really, I'm not really one to, um, especially at the amateur level, you know, amateur, semi pro, whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm not looking, I'm not seeking out guys, and I'm not looking to avoid guys either. Listen, he mm. has a skill set, and uh, December seventh, I'm going to implement my skill set and um, do everything I can to negate it. All right, I got uh, just one question for me. Now you mentioned you trained at the Hodge Gracie Academy. And recently, Martin, for the first time, we went yes. to the um, IBJJF um, Crystal yeah. Palace. Crystal Palace, the, the um, European Opens. And that, yeah. what is it like to train with such a bunch of guys who are high high level ranked, especially under Professor Hodger Gracie? What 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 influence and what what motivation does that give you training your ground game there? I mean, it's tremendous. I mean, first and foremost, Hodger Gracie is one of the most accomplished juicy practitioners. 
amateurs of all time. Yeah. So you know that everything that he's put his black belt is proven in competition and it's absolutely effective. Yeah. And, um, mm-hmm. I try and train everything at separate gyms for the main reason that um, like when I go to a boxing gym, I will be sparring and competing with boxers. They, they devote a hundred percent of their time to boxing, so mm-hmm. they so you end up getting you know. Nothing's watered down. You get a boxer who's um, completing the skill set, and that's the same thing with jiu-jitsu. I mean, these guys compete on the jiu-jitsu circuit. They compete regularly, and they're incredibly tough at what they do. I mean, I train at the Mill Hill branch of Roger Gracie, and um, the coach there, Nick Burke, is, he's a phenom when it comes to jiu-jitsu. I mean, he studies the game. He's always watching all the IBJJF tournaments. And um, so- no, disrespect, no disrespect to my opponent, but like, if I'm hanging with purple belts and I'm able to, like, negate what they're doing, pass their guard and whatnot, not saying I am, but then, like, when I take into a mixed martial arts context, I feel like, you know, I'll be, uh, Okay, so at what point, I mean, I'm just going to play a little bit of devil advocate here, at what point do you actually do MMA sparring then? So if you're going individual gyms doing individual um, sparring... I've, I've actually had the privilege recently, I, I reached out to um, Dave Lee uh, from UFC. Yeah, fantastic fighter, yes. I've been uh, doing a bit of MMA sparring at his gym in CrossFit, sparring uh, uh, Dave Lee, and then we've been doing a bit of MMA sparring at That's fantastic. So, nearly finishing up. So, if you was to win this fight, yeah, mm-hmm. what's next for you? Is there be would, there, would you like to face maybe for the title? What what what's what's? I mean, what's... listen, I don't mind fighting. I don't mind fighting for a title. I'm not too familiar with the title holder, but uh, listen, when I was young, I used to have a WWE title and a WWE belt at the time. <laughs> I, I think we all did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I respect everyone that gets in the cage. I'm in here trying to work my skill set with my fights. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm the kind of person that uh, I don't take pride in finding a guy who's got, like, a record of one and seven, you know? I'm not. I'm in there, first and foremost, to prove stuff to myself and to, uh, you know, uh, have my own accomplishments within this sport. And I just wouldn't feel like I would have accomplished anything by, by fighting a guy that's one and seven. So, you know, I want to face the good guys. I don't want to face the seven and the guys, the eight and the guys, the nine and the guys. Those are the guys that it comes to uh, when it comes down to uh, you know, next one shots. I, I mean, as it, as it stands, this, this fight between you and Yusuf Beza is looking like a number one contender for um, the current champion in you guys' weight class, which is Charlie Boy Howard. I mean, what do you know about Charlie Boy? Uh, I know that he's got a jiu-jitsu background. Um, I know that he's uh, either a and or 9 and I know he brings a big fan base to his fight, so uh, it should be interesting if I am able to get past Yusuf Beza. But right now, I'm able to... Um, Focus on this episode. Yeah. That's it. Who, who, who will you be representing uh, fi- um, on fight night? I mean, which gym or will you be? Uh, I have no idea. It will most likely be Mio Jiu Jitsu because that's where you guys will probably be doing the filming and that's where I do spend a bulk of my time. Uh, you know, I really do enjoy the Jiu Jitsu there and the, the, the people there, the team there, the community there are really cool. So, um, yeah, we'll go with Mio Jiu Jitsu. Cool, cool, PK. Listen, just before we let you go, I'm going to give you the opportunity. If there's anyone you want to say thank you to, any of your sponsors, any of your training partners, feel free to do uh, so now. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you guys for giving me the interview. I mean, it's not every day that a guy that fights on a freaking semi pro show amateur show gets an interview. So, thank you. you hey, know. buddy, we're not, we're not, we're not, we, uh, we are the show. <laughs> the, yeah, the, yeah, the, you know, the that's show. Why, that's why I'm uh, <laughs> blessed to be fighting with you guys. Uh, I'd like to just say shout out to my uh, two main trainers. 
Scott Chapman, my friend Taylor, I mean, we go around to all the gyms together, we go to our boxing gym together, we go uh, to our, uh, we go to the wrestling gym together, and we both uh, put up two other great here. My friend Paul Chapman has been with me since day one, he's always in my corner. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, just thanks to, all the, thanks to all the coaches, my wrestling coach, Eric Ciotti, you know, I'm, I'm kind of annoying in the sense that, like, if you coach me, I'm going to, like, be there off the class for 30 minutes, asking you questions, asking you questions, and, like, they coaching the gym today, we're going to kick me out of the gym, you know, they're always like, listen, the gym's closing, stop drilling, go home, do something else. So, Fantastic. Uh, just thanks to my coaches for having patience with me, and thanks to my uh, two main friends for uh, just always being there. Okay. Hey, Kai, okay, it's been a pleasure talking yeah. to you, and I'm sure we'll catch up with you very soon. Very, very soon. Thanks myself. a lot, PK. And Martin. And we'll, see you, we'll see you at season's beatings. <laughs> Take care. Have a good training session. Take care. Thanks. I mean, wow, what a humble guy, man. This yeah. is what I mean. MMA, he's only young as well. He's, I think he's about yeah. 19, 20. Good um, match. Yeah, do you know very what I mean? Very good very, match, very good match. Imagine, you know, he's humble towards Yusuf. He respects Yusuf's, you know, skill, skill sets, etc. And obviously, we'll get Yusuf online on, 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 on a, a next podcast. Surely. Um, but you know, he's 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 training with such a high caliber group of gyms fighters. Yeah, yeah. This again, like with most, well, actually, most of the fight guys, I can't call the fights. It yeah. is, uh, and uh, you may be sitting there going, oh, "Well, you match up the fights, Dan." Oh well, yeah, I match them up, and I match them up good <laughs> in the sense yeah. of do do, bro, chump on my own ass. But um, Bit of smoke. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I can't really call it. It's this is, and like you said, this is could be potentially for number one. Well, this is this is what you know what Fury MMA is about, isn't it? I mean, nobody wants to see you know a contest between oh he's gonna you know absolutely kick the you know what out yeah. of the other guy. We want to actually be like, what would happen if? Well, it's all about our fans. About. Yes, you know, if you're course. if you're buying a ticket or if you're coming to watch our show, it's not just about the fighters, it's not just about us, it's about the fans. Whether you're a Fury MMA fan, whether you're a Bama fan, a Cage Warriors fan, a UC MMA fan, a UFC fan. But most importantly, an MMA, MMA fan. fan. That is what we're trying to give you. A great MMA, night of MMA, and under the Fury MMA banner. Incredible. So, talking about MMA... Next week. So yeah, so we've basically done the international scene. Yeah, now we're yeah. gonna deal with the domestic, domestic scene, yeah. ain't we? Well, the, one of the bigger one next week. We've got UCMMA yes. forty one, I believe. Um, you know, coming up. That's at the um, London Troxy. I mean, this card again. You know, some interesting fights, huh? Yeah, I mean, one of them I'm really looking forward to is the rematch of the f- regional fight that happened on Fury Four, I believe, three or four, um, when we had our showdown in Essex. Against Stacy the Hammer Hayes versus Elisa McCallum. Now this fight, I mean these girls have got a grudge match. Wow. You know, um, Lisa, um, Lisa managed to get a win against Stacy last time, but I know Stacy's training hard. I know she's training with my form, former training partner, my former coach Mark Babyface Smith down at Centex yeah. Gym. She's training in a boxing with Mark Potter. Yeah. You know, this girl, um, she's scary, man. If, she, if you go on the wrong side of her, she is scary. And she, I can expect her to throw some big bombs. Fireworks. Lisa. Yeah, Fireworks. You know? And Lisa, again, you know, let's not underestimate, let's not underestimate excuse me. Um, you know, I'm not sure if she still does, but she used to train with Eddie Cohn. Oh. You know, the BJJ, you know, that's a great club to train with, or she used to train there. And you know she she's got great stand up as well. Mm. So again, that's one of the one of the fights that stands out for me. Another one for me is my pal Jermaine Facey versus <laughs> Makunga. Now this fight is interesting. It's very one. interesting. You know, yeah. um, Jermaine he, he's he's fast. He's slick. I mean, last time when he when he fought um, is it Charles Leary, Leary I believe yeah. it was. His shoulder popped for the title, it. wasn't oh, it? It was yeah. for the title, and his shoulder. I mean, he'll tell you dislocated. And he carried on fighting, and it was like like rubber band. <laughs> yeah. He carried on fighting, and you know it'd be very interesting if Makunga can can withstand um, Jermaine Face's striking. Or, you know, Makunga is yeah. tough as well. He's, He's tough. Very He's got great durable. great takedowns. Yeah. You know, so. Um, Michael Shipman versus Ty Palmer well, as Ty well. Palmer. A, yeah. you know uh, what's that London shoot versus CSA yeah. this is going to be yeah. a very interesting yeah. contest two you know young hungry fighters from two good teams two good camps yeah. you know they're going to go at it and, well, of um, course and I'm hoping so and you know a bit of favouritism again here. we're obviously hoping Ty, Ty will win because he's, he's fighting for our uh, middleweight title on December 7th Yes. Uh, but you know Michael Shipman not to be underestimated it was a At great all. camp you know 
this guy, he's a beast. I've seen him fight a couple of times. It, it is going to be very, very interesting card. And like I said, that's that's the domestic scene for next weekend. Um, mine, I think we're going to, on our next show, who are we going to have? Mr. Kofi Black. Black. Listen, you, obviously you saw the, if you haven't seen the Fury Goes Raw when we went filming um, behind the scenes of the promo videos of Alex Law at Dana NWA. That will be coming. That will be coming up very shortly, yeah. and, be, and you know what, Kofi, <laughs> very interesting interview with some very interesting points. I mean, you know, he came to Fury with a bit of a reputation, and you know, caused a you know had a little bit of a, um two issues when we came to to Fury as well. Yeah. But man, I'm telling you. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> this is somebody, you know, I do think Kofi Black is marketable, highly intelligent, and, you know, he's got a lot to say. Some I'm, not of taking, which, I'm not taking anything controversial. away from... I'm not taking anything away from Alex. Oh, from man, of course Alex, not. Absolutely not. I mean, both of these guys are making their pro debuts. Again, I can't call this fight. Go either way. <laughs> it could literally go either way. Very well matched up. Again, guys, until next week, again, I want to say thank you for PK for coming online. I'm sure yeah. we will get Yusuf on at some point to have his say. Um, look out for our um, Fury Goes Raw this is where we go behind the scenes there and then we'll be uploading on our social media sites and look out for our promo videos of, of some of the oh, top they'll be coming guys. very shortly our weatherman is working on it right away as we speak um, apart from that December 7th I'm, you know, we're, having, we're short of time right now to talk about the card but keep an eye out on our social media and our website of the updated fight cards We've got stacked card. We've got great fights, great gyms. December 7th, season's beating at Studio 338. I'm telling you, you shouldn't go anywhere else. This no is way. the place to be. For myself, Daniel Moverheady and Martin Ireland, I'm not going to do the emails because you should know it <laughs> by now. If you don't know it, contact us via Facebook. Ah, fuck it, I'm just going to give it to you anyway. It's dan at fury-mma.co.uk. <laughs> And it's Martin at Fury hyphen dot <laughs> Martin at Fury hyphen MMA dot co dot UK. Message us with any questions you guys have got. For now, peace. Take care.